Hello YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla vlog with me, Adam Wellenpond. I'm only a couple days away from three months ownership of my Tesla Model 3 2021 refresh. Three whole months and 1500 miles, which is crazy. So now the honeymoon phase is over, what are my honest opinions on the car? What didn't meet my expectations? What did? And to mark three months ownership, I've given the car a real good clean up just to celebrate. So before I get started, please can you support my channel by hitting the like button, subscribe and notification bell. It really helps me out so even more people can enjoy my content, especially if you enjoy my content. The purpose of this three months review is to definitively answer some expectations that I have with the car and maybe I'll answer some expectations of yours too in the process. I want to cover both the good and the bad as well as some unexpected positives and negatives. No car on the planet has no issues, period. EV, gas, petrol alternatives, you're going to find issues. That is no different with the Model 3. So here is an honest coverage and representation of my Tesla 2021 Model 3. You don't have to search far to see Tesla owners expressing their disappointment on panel gaps and paint issues. It would be a real shame to turn up to a car of such value and it be in such a state. Thankfully for me, I did not have these issues or any meaningful issues that, would, that left me feeling disheartened on the forecourt. There was something broken on the car for which I will cover later in the video and how I did need Tesla service to fix it. But the reality is these panel gap issues are becoming less of a frequent issue as manufacturing improvements have been made since launch. Looking at the performance of the Model 3 Standard Range Plus, which is apparently the slowest car they offer, you still get all the acceleration benefits of a Tesla, even in their slowest offering. Instant torque is the roller coaster ride from home. Instant power is not only fun, but it's also very useful for when you need that jump onto that tricky roundabout or difficult junction. Don't be disheartened by the 0.9 second difference between the SR Plus and the long range in the 0 to 60 times. It will still knock your socks off, just as I expected. Turn into the inclusion of the heat pump with the refreshed Model 3. Does this make a difference? With complete honesty, it's hard to give it a hard fact comparison to back up a claim. I haven't driven a Model 3 pre-heat pump to compare the difference either. Having driven in winter and warmer weather, I have seen a difference in driving efficiency, but the gap in the driving efficiency does look smaller than some examples provided on dedicated forum posts. So the only claim that I can make is that it looks like it has made a welcome step in closing that efficiency gap. Finally, costs. It's one that I expected to perform and thankfully it does. I've already covered my home charger and energy tariff in a previous video and I've been on this tariff for a number of weeks now. For me, it's just crazy that our cost to charge last week was less than £1.15. No petrol or gas car compete with that, period. Even road trips, for when we can finally can, will be totally free thanks to the referral miles that I got from using someone's referral code. Don't forget to use a referral code or you are sacrificing 1,000 free miles too, which in my eyes gives you a free fuel pass for road trips. I'll pop mine in the description below. Turn into something that failed. I did have one issue that needed Tesla service and that was a faulty side repeater camera. I flagged this up as soon as I got home from delivery via the Tesla app. The app is quick and easy to use. You simply select the category and write a small summary of the issue, then Tesla contacts you. It's as easy as ordering a pizza, but initially the estimate I received for the fix had a cost. I then followed this up with a call because I didn't believe that was the right way to go about it. The service operator knew exactly what my issue was and immediately resubmitted it as a warranty job. So no cost was due, as rightly so. This was a persistent issue with this batch of the 2021 deliveries. You couldn't miss the issue though, as it displays on the screen and the camera is just black if you even if you try to view it. Hell, you may even see the error message on my screen in some of my earlier videos. So I'm not quite sure how this slipped the Q&A. After reporting the fault, frankly, I did not need to travel to my local service center. Instead, a Tesla Ranger came to me in a Model S. I gave him the key card and they then switched the cameras over in around 20 to 30 minutes, all from the pleasure of my own home. In reality, we all want a flawless experience when picking up a new car. Even though it was an inconvenience and I shouldn't have needed to do this, 
it was a relatively painless experience and if something is going to go wrong you want it to be something that is a quick and easy fix that doesn't affect your experience which is exactly how I felt with this particular issue. An issue I heard about but I didn't really pay enough attention to is the Model 3 is extremely easy to scuff your alloys and get curb rash. Initially I did see that you can purchase some alloy uh, protectors. I also heard some horror stories of alloy protectors ripping off whilst driving and that laid deep scratches. So I didn't really pay much attention to this and it wasn't until I actually cleaned the car that I actually saw the random curb rash in the car. And I always thought that my tyres were socially distant from the curves, but obviously not. Another frequently discussed issue on the Model 3 the car tends to get condensation in the rear lights. For some reason, this seems to be a regular occurrence. Having since viewed other videos specifically on the matter, it appears there are some gaps for moisture to enter the lights. The video that I watched was very thorough. He puts the rear lights into a container of water and these bubbles just appear, demonstrating where the gaps are, similar to a punctured wheel in water. He was a professional though, so I'm definitely not going to copy him. Tesla can replace the whole light units in extreme circumstances, but other users have reported a repeat of the same issue even with the new units. But the moisture that I do have tends to dry out with the car or, or as the day warms up. I can live with that as long as it doesn't affect anything important, but it's still a bit of an eyesore if there is bad condensation that day. And it's an issue that I hope that they get on top of for future Model 3s. The final thing I want to note is Every day is a school day when you own a Tesla. You're constantly learning new capabilities of the car. That's even before you get a new software update, which brings you even more to get excited over. Let me take you through some examples. The seats are incredibly comfy. I had no idea that they hug you like they do. If you're in the car for long periods of time, you expect to feel fatigued, but seriously, the seats have surprised me gearless automatic experience. If you're from the UK like me, driving manual cars are generally the norm around here. So just flicking to drive or to reverse is an absolute breeze. It's relaxing, yet a sporty experience if you really want it. We know the SR Plus does 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds, and it's especially nimble from around 10 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour. So you get this weird roller coaster sensation when you put it in full power, your head hits the back of the headrest and you just want to do it all over again. Then you have the community. When you own a Model 3, or even an EV for that matter, there's this sort of brotherhood or sisterhood of owners where if you have an issue or you want advice on something, whether it's YouTube, or on social media, or dedicated forums, other people want to help you. Even when you're using a public charger, you end up talking about your experience with the fellow electric car user it just really helps with the transmission that you have this support network available. Finally, Autopilot is definitely an experience to try. It's one that you never truly understand until you give it full control. For, for instance, from Autopilot, I kept trying to move it back to the middle of the lane as it kept veering left. The reality is, is that I don't drive in the middle of the lane. I've always taken more room on the driver's side of the lane and Autopilot corrected that. I could have slated it, but... If you really try and understand what it's trying to do, you actually realise the machine can calculate the sense of the lane way better than me as the human. For all this time, I was wrong for trying to veer it back to the left. I mean, this is why I hate playing chess with it against the Tesla. To conclude, if I could go back in time and prevent myself from purchasing Model 3 after three months of ownership, would I do it? No, I wouldn't. I'd do the exact same thing. Why? Because this car feels and drives like the future. It's fun to drive, yet it's my family car. It's full of tech that not only covers entertainment like no other car, it delivers unrivaled safety technology that keeps me and my family safe. Even the over-air software updates keep the car up to date with the latest software enhancements. Yes, it has its minor flaws, and you read some horror stories, but you can find that in any car. The issues that I have would not have prevented me from going through the experience all over again. I think if you test drive one, or if you own a Model 3, chances are you feel the exact same about doing it all over again. When I look outside Tesla, no one is directly comparable to the offering of Tesla in 2021.
they're having issues with implementing over the air software updates or they're carrying extra batteries to compensate for the Tesla efficiency advantage. In the EV world, Big Auto cannot compete in 2021 with Tesla and therefore the Model 3 for me is still the car of choice. That's it, now you've been informed. Don't forget to support my channel by hitting the like, subscribe and sharing the video with your friends and family. I really enjoy doing these Tesla vlogs and the support is hugely welcomed. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.